Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today we're gonna dive deep into a topic you might not think is that exciting at first, uh, power supplies. Power supplies. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we all use them every day, but uh, we're talking specifically about the ones that power our audio equipment. Right. And you might be surprised how much this seemingly like technical aspect actually impacts the sound quality. It's true. It really is the foundation of the whole thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of like the soil that your music grows from. I like that analogy. Yeah. So we'll be using this really great article from Expressive Audio. Okay. It's a UK hi-fi retailer. Cool. And they do a really good job of breaking down the differences between the two main types. Which are? Linear power supplies, which are the like the traditional ones. Mm -hmm. And switch mode power supplies, which are the newer technology. Right. And we'll see why audiophiles get so passionate about this stuff. We're ready. And maybe even uncover some of those almost magical aspects of audio that science hasn't quite figured out yet. Yeah. So, but before we get into all of that, yeah. uh, let's make sure we're all on the same page with the basics of electricity. Right. So we've got direct current DC. That's the steady flow of electricity, like what you get from a battery. Yep. And then there's alternating current AC, and that's what comes out of our wall socket. Exactly. And fun fact for you, in the UK, our AC power comes in at 230 volts, and it cycles at a frequency of 50 hertz. 50 hertz. I mean, it's not something you think about every day, right? Not really, no. No, but the important thing is that most electronics need low voltage DC to function. That's right. And that's where power supplies come in. They do the converting. Yeah, they do the conversion. They're like the middleman. Right, from that high voltage AC to the lower voltage DC. Exactly. And to do that, they rely on some key components. Transformers, rectifiers, filters, all that good stuff. Yeah, okay. So let's start with transformers. Right. I always kind of pictured them as these mysterious black boxes yeah. with wires coming out. Yeah, they are kind of mysterious. Yeah. But what's actually going on in there? Well, imagine two cooning forks. Right. You strike one. Yeah. And even though they're not touching, the other one starts to vibrate too. Okay. That's kind of how a transformer works. It uses magnetism to transfer energy between coils of wire. Okay. I'm starting to get it. So when that alternating current flows through one coil, yeah. it creates a changing magnetic field. And that induces a voltage in another coil. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. So what does this have to do with power supplies, though? Well, the frequency of that alternating current, the 50 hertz we were talking about, right? that plays a big role in how transformers are designed. Okay, how so? Lower frequencies require much bigger and heavier transformers. Uh-huh. So that's why those old school hi-fi amps are so heavy. Exactly. I remember helping a friend move his vintage tube amp once, and it was like lifting a small car. Yeah, those transformers can be beasts. The transformer alone must have been like half the weight of the whole thing. I bet it was. It's a trade-off, isn't it? It is. You get that lower frequency, but you need a bigger, heavier transformer. But it's not just about transformers, right? But now? There are other important parts in there, too. Like what? Rectifiers, for example. Rectifiers. Yeah. Right. Okay. Break that down for me. They're basically like one-way valves for electricity. Okay. Alternating current. You know, it flows in both directions, positive and negative. Mm-hmm. Rectifiers make sure that the current only flows one way. Oh, I see. The article mentions a bridge rectifier with a diamond shape. Okay. So picture that diamond shape. I got it. What it does is it takes that AC wave and flips the negative parts to be positive. Okay. So instead of a nice smooth wave going up and down, you end up with a bumpy but always positive signal. Got it. So it's like straightening it out in a way? Sort of, yeah. It's making sure it's all flowing in the right direction. Okay, and then there are filters too, right? Yes, filters. To smooth things out. Exactly. So how do they work? Well, they use capacitors. Okay. And those act like tiny reservoirs that can store electrical energy. Interesting. You know how the article talked about a hi-fi light that dims slowly after you turn it off? Right. That's the capacitor slowly discharging its stored energy. Oh, that makes sense. So in a power supply, those capacitors smooth out the bumps from the rectifier. Okay. And make the DC output closer to that nice steady flow you get from a battery. So we've got transformers, rectifiers, and filters. These are the building blocks of any power supply. That's right, the essential ingredients. But now let's look at how they're put together in the two main types, linear power supplies and switch mode power supplies. Okay, let's do it. Let's start with the old school, what's the deal with linear power supplies? Well, there's the traditional approach, you know, simple in concept AC comes in. Yeah. The transformer steps it down to lower voltage. Mm -hmm. The rectifier makes it DC, the filter smooths it out, and then a regulator keeps the output voltage nice and steady. Sounds pretty straightforward. It is pretty straightforward, really. Well, what's the catch? Is there a downside to all this simplicity? 
Well, you know those big, heavy transformers we talked about? Yeah. They're kind of a necessary evil in these LPS designs, especially mm -hmm. for high-power applications. Right. So that means linear power supplies can be bulky, expensive, and, you know, let's be honest, not very pretty. Yeah, not exactly ideal in our modern world of sleek, compact devices. Yeah, definitely not the most aesthetically pleasing. So there's got to be a better way, right? Well, that's where switch mode power supplies come in, or SMPS for yeah. short. SMPS. They're a bit more complex, but they offer some serious advantages like being much smaller and lighter. Oh, I'm intrigued. The article even mentions a comparison. A 30-watt SMPS weighs a fraction of what just the transformer alone would weigh in an 18-watt LPS. Wow, that's a pretty dramatic difference. That really is. So how do they manage to pack so much power into such a small package? That's the million-dollar question. Tell me everything. All right, let's dive into the magic of SMPS. Well, the magic of an SMPS, it's all in that high-frequency switching. High-frequency switching. Okay, so explain that to me like I'm five. Okay, well, it's kind of like chopping that 50 hertz AC signal into tiny little pieces thousands of times per second. Thousands of times a second. Yeah, it's super fast. Okay, so why is that good? Well, it lets them use a much smaller transformer, remember? Right, right, yeah, smaller is better usually. Exactly. So that's a big win in terms of size and weight. Makes sense, but isn't there a downside to all this like efficiency and stuff? Yeah. I've heard some audiophiles say that SSTS sounds kind of digital and sterile. Huh. Is there any truth to that? It's an interesting point. Some people definitely do perceive a difference in sound quality between LPS and SMPS. So what's the difference then? Well, generally linear power supplies, they're considered quieter. Okay. They have less electrical noise and interference. And that interference can like muddy up the sound or something? Yeah, exactly. It can kind of veil the details. Okay, so is it like a night and day difference or is it more subtle? I mean, it depends on the person in the system. For some people, the difference might be very subtle while others find it quite noticeable. I see. Think of it like listening to music through a slightly smudged window. Okay. You can still hear the music. Right. But the details aren't quite as clear. I get it. A good LPS. It's like cleaning that window. Yeah. You know, letting you hear all the nuances and subtleties of the music. Yeah. That's a great analogy. I'm starting to see why audiophiles get so passionate about this stuff. Yeah, it's all about that quest for the purest sound. The holy grail of audio. Exactly. But it's not just about, like, eliminating noise, is it? No, it's not. No, what's also there? Well... LPS designs, they're also known for their better transient response. Transient response. Yeah. Okay, that's a new one for me. What does that mean? Imagine you're listening to a track with a sudden, powerful drum hit. Okay. Yeah. That requires a burst of energy from the amplifier. Makes sense. And a good LPS, it's better equipped to deliver that energy cleanly without any sagging or distortion. So you'll hear the difference, especially in the bass. It'll sound tighter, more impactful. Okay, now that's something I can relate to. I love that punch in the chest when the bass drops. Exactly. And that brings us back to that anecdote from the article about the name Hi-Fi Demo. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. So picture this. You're listening to a familiar track, something you've heard a million times before. Okay. On a really nice Hi-Fi system. Mm -hmm. You think you know every nuance, every little detail. Yeah. And then they swap out the power supply for a higher quality LPS unit. Okay. Suddenly it's like someone took a veil off the speakers. Really? The music just opens up. So even on a good system, yeah. you can still hear a difference when you upgrade the power supply. Absolutely. It could be pretty dramatic. So what does it sound like? Well, everything becomes crystal clear. The details are sharper. The soundstage widens. Vocals become more present. And you can hear those subtle reverb tails on instruments that you never even noticed before. Wow. So it's like hearing the music for the first time all over again. That's a great way to put it. That's incredible. It's really all about revealing those hidden details and emotions, mm -hmm. bringing the music to life in a way you never thought possible. That's the power of a great power supply. It is. It's not about making things louder. It's about revealing the soul of the music. I like that. So if someone is listening to this right now and thinking, okay, I'm convinced power supplies matter, mm. where do I even begin? Yeah, that's a good question. Do I need to go out and buy some super expensive audiophile grade power supply right away? Well, not necessarily the first step is just to be aware of the importance of power supplies. Okay. Pay attention to the specs when you're shopping for new gear. Right. Do a little research, read some reviews. Okay. And, you know, see what other audio files are saying. So it's all about making informed choices and finding what works best for your ears and your budget. Exactly. You don't have to spend a fortune to make a noticeable improvement. That's good to know. A good place to start is with your digital source. Yeah. Like your CD player or your streamer 
or even your computer. Oh, that's a good point. We've been talking a lot about stereo systems, but what about all those people who are listening to music through their computers or their phones or even little devices like a Raspberry Pi? Right. Those often come with very basic power supplies. And that can hold them back? It can. It's like having a Ferrari with a flat tire. You know, you're not going to experience its full potential until you fix that tire. That's a great analogy. Upgrading the power supply on your digital source, it could be a relatively affordable way to get a big improvement in sound quality. Okay, I'm sold. I'm going to have to look into upgrading the power supply on my Raspberry Pi. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. But what about those like magical aspects of audio that we talked about earlier? The things that science can't fully explain? Ah, uh, yes, the mysteries of audio. Yeah, you're telling me there's stuff about how we hear music that we still don't understand? Absolutely. Yeah. There's still so much we don't know about how our brains perceive sound. That's fascinating. It really is. And there's always room for new discoveries. So it's like this blend of science and like something else. Yeah. A bit of magic, maybe. Yeah. It's about trusting your ears and being open to the possibility that there's more to audio than meets the eye or ear in this case. That's a great way to put it. So even though science can't explain everything, it doesn't mean those subtle differences aren't real. Exactly. And it's up to each individual listener to decide what sounds best to them. There's no right or wrong answer when it comes to how you experience music. Exactly. So are you saying that some of these sonic differences, they might be purely psychological? It's possible, but it's also possible that there are subtle electrical or magnetic phenomena at play that we just haven't fully grasped yet. Okay. For example, some people believe that the materials used in a power supply, yeah, like the type of wire or the core of the transformer, can have an impact on the sound. Interesting. I've heard people talk about things like oxygen-free copper and toroidal transformers, uh -huh. but I never really understood what difference those actually made. Yeah, it's a complex topic, and there's a lot of debate about whether these subtle differences are truly audible. But the bottom line is, there's still so much we don't know about the world of audio. And that's what keeps it so interesting. Exactly. It's a never-ending journey of discovery. I completely agree. Always be open to new possibilities. That's the spirit. So speaking of new possibilities, is there something else you wanted to mention? Yeah, there's one more thing I wanted to touch on. on. You tell I'm all ears. So we've talked a lot about upgrading power supplies for like individual components. Right. But what about the power coming into your house in the first place? You know, oh, that's wait. the foundation for everything. I never even thought about that. Is our good old UK mains power actually dirty, you know, in a way that affects audio? It can be, think about all the devices in your home that are drawing power from the same lines. Oh, yeah. Appliances, lights, computers, everything. Right. All that stuff can introduce noise and interference into the AC signal. So it's like having a pure source of water, but it's mm. flowing through like a rusty pipe. Yeah, exactly. That's on a much larger scale. Exactly. And, you know, for really critical listening, some audiophiles, they take things a step further. Oh, really? They are actually yeah. invest in dedicated power lines just for their audio system. Wow, so they're like completely separate from everything else in the house. Yeah, completely isolated. That's dedication, but does it really make that much of a difference? It can, especially mm -hmm. if you live in an area with a lot of electrical noise or you have a lot of devices running on the same circuit. Right. It's like creating a dedicated lane on the highway just for your audio signal. Okay, I see what you mean. So it's not just about the, the power supplies inside our components. It's about the whole electrical ecosystem of our homes. Yeah, it all ties together. Wow, so much to think about. It is, but don't get overwhelmed. Okay. Start with the basics, yeah. you know, and gradually work your way up. That's good advice. So start by understanding the power supplies in your current system and then explore upgrades, you know, as your budget and your listening preferences evolve. Exactly. It's all about that journey of sonic discovery. It really is. It's like we've opened up a whole new dimension of audio one that most people don't even know exists. And that's the beauty of being an audiophile. There's always something more to learn, more to discover, and more to enjoy. A lifelong pursuit. Exactly. So as we wrap things up, what are some key takeaways you'd like our listeners to remember from this deep dive into the world of power supplies? Okay, well, first and foremost, power supplies are more than just boring boxes. They have a huge impact on the quality of your audio experience. Right, because they're the foundation. Exactly. And second, while switch mode power supplies are great for efficiency, and size linear power supplies, they generally offer better sound quality, especially for critical listening. Right, so it's a trade-off. Exactly. <laughs> and third, don't underestimate the importance of a clean, stable power source. Okay, so like watch out for that dirty electricity. Yeah, and finally, trust your ears. Experiment. You know, find what sounds best to you. 
Well said. It's been a pleasure exploring the world of power supplies with you today. Likewise, I've enjoyed it. And to all our listeners out there, we hope this deep dive has sparked your curiosity about the power behind the sound. Remember, there's always more to discover. <laughs> Until next time, 